Welcome, my name is Earl Amin, and you're listening to the 2024 Side Podcast, where CEOs, presidents, and leaders of small to global companies share their insights. It is six questions in nine minutes because leadership knows how to listen and be concise. So let's get to it. First of all, welcome. And in just a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Thank you for having me. Um, I am David Lowe Rogstedt. I'm the CEO at Owen Jones and Partners. We are a brand experience uh, and advertising agency located in Portland, Oregon, with people all over the country and all over the world. Um, as far as what do I do, um, I mentor and lead people. Uh, I ride bicycles. I play board games. I read a lot. I write a little, cook as much as I can. I'm a partner to my spouse and parent to my children. And professionally, um, I do good by doing well. Um, I believe my role as CEO is to build a growing, sustainable, profitable business so the company and its people can do good in the world. That was a mouthful, but it was the right mouthful. So tell me, David, what's the best thing about being the CEO of your company? I, I am a lifelong learner. And being CEO means I get to be continually learning, growing, developing skills, changing what I do. Um, this job is constantly changing. It's constantly challenging. I love that. Um, two years ago, I was running a 35-person company for the first time in my life. A year ago, I was running a 50-person company for the first time in my life. Now I'm running a 75-person company for the first time in my life. Um, that is great. It's exciting. It's what gets me up every day to think, you know, this is the first time I get to do this. And what am I going to learn today? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, tell me, I'm sure in your path, your ascension to leadership, you've heard from other leaders, as we all have, that leading a team in and of itself can be a challenge. But being able to see the road ahead and prepare for it is an altogether different challenge. What are your thoughts? So one of my early mentors, he told me a CEO only has three responsibilities, um, set and communicate the vision, attract and develop only the best talent, and always make sure there's money in the bank. Um, I remind myself of that almost every day to say, why am I here? And what is my vision or what is my purpose? Um, but the metaphor I like to use as far as looking ahead is um, it's kind of like kayaking a river or riding a mountain bike trail where you're building a set of tool tools so that what you hit next, whether it's a rapid or a, a feature, you have a set of tools as you go in, so you know how to handle this. But if you don't, you have the confidence to get yourself out of it and bring the team through. So for me, it's very similar in business where I'm constantly building a toolbox. What are we learning? How are we developing? And the more confidence I have in that toolbox, the more confidence I have to look farther and farther out because I know we can handle it as we encounter it. Mm, very good. Very good. Well, out of that piece of brilliance you just spoke, what key piece of insight do you want to share with and for the benefit of other leaders, other CEOs? Um, so in our business, we're only as good as our people. Um, and I believe our key competitive advantage is for everyone in the organization to be able to show up fully, authentically. And that begins with me. And for leaders, that begins with them. Um, so it's critical that we understand what our values are personally and what our values of the organization are. And we are showing up every day, living those and embodying those. Um, but we're not going to be perfect. And for me personally is if I'm not showing up as a leader, I need to be a per certain day or the team's not functioning at the level I need it to be. Uh, it's important to give myself a little bit of grace, a little bit of compassion and know that um, it's a work in progress and it always will be. So to come back the next day, re-energized, recommitted and to re-deliver that. But, um, you know, for me, one of the key things is an example is um, mental health is very important to me. I'm very open and transparent with my team about my journey and about my relationship with my therapist and that I engage with that. And it allows me to separate from being this I'll call it a, the idea of a CEO is infallible and perfect and never you know, failing. That is who I am. This is important to me. And that allows me to show up. And mm -hmm. in a way, it says, if I can be authentic, everyone else here gets to be authentic and, and arrive in the place they need to be. 
And my, my team hears this a lot and they yeah. probably um, are, have heard it enough, but I believe asking for help is a very advanced skill and it takes a lot of time to learn that. Um, yeah. And for me, I love being in a room to say, I don't know, because mm -hmm. that starts a really amazing conversation, a really place for me to get curious. Right. So my fundamental learning and what I pass forward is get really curious, really dig yeah. into if you don't know, that's a wonderful place to start. Well, you, you've clearly had the advantage of interacting with other successful models. So what other successful CEOs like yourself would you like to acknowledge or give a shout out to and should be on my podcast? <laughs> well, the, the first one I want to give um, honor and respect to, unfortunately, is no longer with us, um, is Ray Anderson from uh, Interface. Um, and I had the opportunity to see him before he passed. And uh, it was early in my career as an executive, and he really helped me understand that you didn't need to choose between being entrepreneurial, successful at business, good at running a company, and uh, being respectful of your people, being a good community partner, being a good steward of the environment. Um, these aren't polarities. It's a spectrum. And that really has influenced my career greatly. Um, awesome. Also, really dig into the work of uh, Brene Brown and Jennifer Garvey Berger. Yes. Um, they've been super influential for me. Um, but people that I know personally that I would absolutely recommend um, is uh, Paul Brown of Cinder Staffing and Tia Coachman of Affirma Consulting. Um, and someone I just met and I can't wait to learn more from and get to know better is uh, Alexis Braley James of uh, Construct the Present. And I will, I will send them their contact, your contact, send you them their contact information. Please do. We shall receive them warmly. Please. Now, for the final question, David, how do you celebrate a win? Um, if it's not obvious by now, I'm a very much a servant model leader. Um, and for me, I love to step back and let the team celebrate and be the ones who even things that it's my place to announce the win. I want the people on my team to be the ones to own that and lead that. It's great for their growth and great for how they um, arrive. Um, and also, we are a team. Every, there are no small positions, if you will, in our group. And I want to make sure that we recognize and value every single person there um, because that's critical. Um, we also have a strong culture at Owen Jones. Uh, sorry, strong culture of gratitude at Owen Jones. So we don't only celebrate the big wins, we celebrate all the wins and sometimes just recognizing the people who show up together at work is a place to celebrate. Yeah. Um, and for me personally, I usually celebrate the wins the same way as shake off losses. I try and go out for a bike ride. There you go. Well done. So, so glad to have you here, but tell me so how can people find you? Um, you can find me at whoisowenjones.com. Um, and various social media platforms as DLO93, um, which is my name abbreviation and my old college hockey number. So that's where I'm at. Outstanding. This is Earl Amin with the 2024 Side Podcast. For more insights, go to LinkedIn and search for The Gray Owl Company. David, outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. From one dynamic CEO to another, from one impactful company to another, up next is an equally great leader worthy to be listened to. First of all, welcome. And in just a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Hello, uh, Earl, nice to see you. Um, my name is Gordon Glenister. I'm an influencer marketing uh, specialist. Uh, so I'm the founder of the, the new association, uh, the Branded Content Marketing Association Influence Division, which I set up in 2019. Um, I'm also the host of Influence, the global podcast, and I'm a recent author of um, Influencer Marketing Strategy, which I just published in March this year. So, Outstanding. Uh, well done. <laughs> well, tell me, Gordon, what's the best thing about being who you are, doing what you do? Um, well, I love the thought of making a difference. I like the feeling of being able to inspire, educate, motivate, and entertain. 
uh, ideally all in the same at the same time. But uh, I think if we look up to leaders now in business, it's it's we, we, we're looking for things that resonate with them. And certainly, if you look at um, the the world of influence. Um, you know, I'm always fascinated as to why we subscribe to certain um, platforms, why we follow certain people. Well, we do because we see something in them that we like to be like. You know, we see something yes. that resonates with us. Um, yes. we, they're there to educate us as well. So I think those are those are important things. Um, but in, in terms of uh, a, a CEO, I love the idea of setting a strategy and a vision. You know, I'm not great at detail, um, but that's one of the things that I've, I've, you know, really remembered through my life is um, it's about having great people around you. It really, really is. Um, you know, almost employ better people than yourself. Do what you do best that you love, yes. and then um, you know, have a great team around you. Indeed, well said. Well said. Well, I'm sure that you've heard, as I've heard, that leadership has its challenges. Leading a team can be a challenge in and of itself, but really seeing the road ahead, that's a certain type of challenge. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, obviously, um, I think if you look back at the last 18 months, um, pretty much no leader could ever have predicted the, the, the pandemic and what's happened. And it's almost like it's a, you know, we, we found new leaders uh, as, as come as a result of that. And some of those people have been from their, you know, lower ranking teams because they've, they've showed up, they've, they've shown leadership skills in a way. Um, there's been no blueprint to go through a pandemic like we've just had. Um, and um, I think, um, you know, when you when you consider everybody looks up to the person that runs the business and it can be a very lonely place. I remember when I ran the British Promotional Merchandise Association, uh, which wasn't just an organisation, but it was also an industry body. And uh, we went through the recession of 20, 2007, 2008, and the industry lost 183 companies in one year. And it was quite daunting when you're looking at members that are going through very, very difficult periods. And you have to, uh, you have to listen. I think the real great quality of a leader is to listen and not yes. always believe that you've got the right answer, but to uh, embrace and empower people to make decisions. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's really important. You know, remember, the buck stops with you. At the end of the day, whatever happens, you've got to take the criticism. I mean, I remember sitting in many board meetings and uh, – and just, you know, I'd have a whole number of executives, non-executives non that would come uh, come to the meetings and all got their opinions and views about what needed to be done. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to take because at the end of the day, you're thinking, have you any idea what it's like to run a business day to day? <laughs> um, but, never, but nevertheless, you know, you learn a lot from that experience. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, even when, you know, cash flow is tight, uh, and you know that the business may be in trouble. How do you shield your team from that? How do you keep yes. them motivated and know that their jobs are going to be secure? So I think it uh, takes a certain type of individual that can remain calm, even if the ship, um, not necessarily is sinking, but uh, <laughs> is rocking. Yes. Indeed, indeed. Uh, good piece of insight. Now, you just spoke a tremendous amount of wisdom what key piece of insight, what singular piece of insight do you want to share with and for the benefit of those listening, those other leaders, those other CEOs? So I think um, uh, it's really just a point that I raised a minute ago, which is about hiring great people. Um, and uh, I run an influencer marketing program now to help people become more influential. 
But if you look at my uh, Instagram and you look at my LinkedIn and you, you, you'd think, oh, well, this guy's doing a really great job. And the reality is it's some of my team that are posting that content, but they know what mm. my tone of voice is. They know mm. what uh, my vision is. Uh, the, the reality is, is that content is working really well because I've set, I've set, the, I've set the vision about what, I, what I'm about. But the reality is, is con- you know, creating content and sharing it is very, very time consuming. And if you did everything, you know, ha- countless times I see CEOs using the word overwhelm. Um, and they're actually on education programs. They're almost over, over-educated as well. Um, yes. there, there's so much going on. And if they really thought about um, hiring virtual assistants, which is Ooh. one of the best things I have ever done. Um, in fact, two of my virtual assistants are from the Philippines and they work one hour a day. Um, they work literally like Trojans really, really well. Um, but now we've got we're in a global um, gig economy. You can hire people for anything all around the world, and don't think that you have to hire somebody for um, a full week. You know, think about having a specific role for somebody that could be in a different country, but they're an absolute expert. So, for example, you know, a podcast editor, a podcast marketeer. You know, you don't have to have somebody that has got all of those skills together. I met somebody the other day that actually employs through his business 150 VAs, which is probably too many, admittedly. But <laughs> but he hires them, actually. He hires them. They go through a training program, and then he makes one of his services that he provides is um, effectively tr- fully trained VAs. Um, because if, right. if you wanted to hire somebody from abroad and you didn't know who to go to, well, that could be a risk. You could get the wrong person. Certainly. Um, so recommendation or referral is really important. Indeed. Well, I imagine that you encounter a good number of CEOs. What other successful CEOs like yourself would you like to acknowledge or give a shout out to and should be on my podcast? Um. Well, um, I was just having a look, actually, before. I mean, there's many that I've encountered. Um, There's a guy called Teddy Fong who runs uh, the Million Dollar Baby. Um, And the reason, I mean, I don't know him personally, but actually I was, um, was, do you know what? I was looking at Glassdoor. And if you ever want to know about an organization, and I know sometimes people say, oh, well, with Glassdoor reviews, sometimes you can get, you know, employees that have, had bad experience and they just go and put that on there. But when you've got a high number of very, very positive reviews, it means people have gone out of their way to post those reviews. So he has a 100% record on Glassdoor reviews and there are, there are loads and loads and loads of them. So, you know, that in a way is a really positive, uh, p- positive consideration. But I think it's, um, uh, you know, th- th- there are... Um, if you actually Glassdoor did a, uh, they've done a what they've done a report recently of the top one hundred um, in the last in the last year. So it's probably worth your listenings at listeners and you going and checking out that list um, as to who who those people are because they've been reviewed by their employees, which I yes, think is indeed. great great testament to CEO leadership. Well done. Well, Gordon, for the final question, how do you celebrate a win? How do you celebrate a win? Um, um, well, um, I, do you know what? I, oft, I, I, do you know, I speak to my sister. My sister's been a great influence on me. And she. Um, I've recently had an opportunity to write for a major UK newspaper. Um, and uh, the first person I spoke to was my sister. She's been a really great, inspiring individual around me. In fact, we've helped each other. When I published my book, because she'd published her book before me, um, and so when I came along and um, uh, showed her my book, she was almost emotional with tears to think that her... Uh, it sounds like it's her baby brother, but actually I'm the older one. <laughs> but uh, I do, it, it's just, it, I mean, it happens to be my sister. Yeah. But my, my advice would be for anybody is tell somebody special to you because I think yeah. if you celebrating a win with somebody special, they will want to acknowledge it back to you as well. 
Indeed. Well done. Well done. Well, Gordon, it's been a pleasure having you on. Last thing, tell us, tell, tell us how we can find you. Um, thank you, Earl. Um, well, I'm on LinkedIn, as you would imagine, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. I mean, it's, it's just Gordon Glenister. There's only one of me, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> and my website is uh, www.gordonglenister.com. And my podcast is on Apple, uh, uh, iTunes and, you know, all leading platforms. So, uh, you know, once, once again, thank you. This is Earl Amin with the 2024 Side Podcast. For more insights, go to LinkedIn and search for The Gray Owl Company. Gordon, a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Pleasure. All the best. Thank you for listening to the 2024 Side Podcast, where CEOs share who they are and what they do in the world that makes a difference. For more entrepreneurial and life-changing insights, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes accounts. All of the links are available below. See you in the next episode.